All over the world, central bankers say that they're concerned about rising house prices. Janet Yellen, the US Treasury Secretary, said they're concerned over the pressures that higher housing prices will create for families that are first-time home buyers or have less income. But there is one big reason they don't actually worry about them too much, even though house prices are through the roof. In short, house prices are not directly included in the main measures that determine when and how central banks deal with inflation. At this point, you may be wondering why that is. One of the main inflation measures is the consumer price index, which is in essence the price of a basket of goods and services like transport, food and medical care. Houses are one of the things most people buy, so why not include them in the consumer price index? Well, in 2016, we got an answer from the UK's Office for National Statistics. They said that the consumer price index aims to measure consumption, whereas the purchase of a house is the purchase of an asset that is not consumed in the same way as other items. And that feeling is shared by the majority of statistical agencies. So they want to exclude the investment factor of buying a house, just as they exclude changes in the value of other investments, such as equities, bonds or gold. So is there a way to solve this? By looking around the world, unlike other countries, the US statistical authorities estimate the change in the notional rent of homes that people own. They argue that rental cost is the best estimate of the consumption of housing services, even though rental trends often differ significantly from house prices. This so-called rental equivalence method was also adopted by the UK in 2017. On the other hand, the EU has taken a different approach. Eurostat and the European Central Bank prefer a method called the net acquisitions method. The net acquisitions method seeks to measure the changing price of purchasing homes, but not the land on which they are built. Unsurprisingly, they are still struggling with how to split house prices into dwelling and land. But this year, the European Central Bank requested Eurostat should include owner-occupied housing costs in its headline Eurozone inflation calculation. But this is not major news, as the central bank has been asking for this for 21 years. The UK also uses another inflation measure, which is the Retail Prices Index. This measure uses house prices with mortgage interest rates to determine the monthly cash payments associated with home ownership. But guess what? On that measure, housing would drag inflation down over the past 15 years because interest rate cuts since the financial crisis have pulled mortgage costs to historic lows. And the European Central Bank is quite skeptical of adopting this measure to include housing prices. As its president, Christine Lagarde, said, its impact on the overall Eurozone inflation would be quite minimal. So the obvious next question is, should mandates for central banks change to focus on house prices in inflation? Well, including house prices in inflation measures could send readings soaring and bring pressure on central banks to tighten their policies even as economies recover from the pandemic. Moreover, adding them is widely seen as impractical given their extreme volatility. But with house prices rising so quickly, central banks are faced with a big dilemma. Withdrawing their support too slowly risks inflating real estate even further and worsening financial stability concerns in the longer term. On the other side, pulling back too strongly means unsettling markets and sending property prices lower, which could threaten the economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. The key to this problem could be in finding the right balance, which is probably easier said than done. But check out New Zealand as an example. This year, they became the first country to require its central bank to assess the effects of its monetary policy decisions on the government's objective of supporting more sustainable house prices. This seemed like a great change to match the continued rising prices, right? Well, yes, but the change was not as revolutionary as they had hoped. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand has interpreted its new mandate quite narrowly, to only intervene when house prices are deemed unsustainable. In its May monetary policy statement, it defined sustainability as not being in bubble territory and referred to how low interest rates made higher prices sustainable. So, at the end of the day, 
if house prices are not included in inflation calculations and governments are too afraid to include them, do central bankers really pay much attention to them? Seems like the answer is no, but what do you think? Thank you as always for watching our videos, please do consider leaving us a like, a comment with your thoughts on this story and subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you again and we'll see you next time.